Okay, so we are good to start and I'm going to go to the Zoom meeting and then you'll also be visible in talking. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. Is, is it okay if I take off my mask? Yes. I feel like I project a little harder with it on. Cool. Um, so I have my audiences right here and then right here. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Sounds good. Um, yeah, so I can start with a quick um, introduction of myself or who I am. So um, Alejandro or Alex Arella, um, I am the dual enrollment uh, coordinator at Foothill. Um, so I, I work with um, uh, high school specifically in Santa Clara County. Uh, I work with very specific pathways. So kind of this, what I'm gonna be talking to you about, um, I actually don't handle much of it, but I'm very familiar with the process and you know, like the things that y'all have to do. Uh, it's a very similar process, um, but again, right, like kind of, um like specifically right like i know that we have a math pathway here at los altos right so we have uh, seniors and juniors that um that take like uh, multivariate calculus and linear algebra so i'm very involved in that planning um and behind the scenes that goes um around that um but again right like i'm not here to talk about that i'm here to talk about just kind of our general um uh, processes dual enrollment processes registration processes um you're gonna hear me talk about it very sarcastically because i'm, I'm not a big fan of them i think that they're like kind of confusing they're not very intuitive there's like a lot to do uh so i like to be very like open about that it's, it's, it's kind of confusing to get through um but that's why i'm here that's why we have folks at foothill that can kind of help you uh walk you through that um and um i guess i can mention now too that you're actually gonna have access to this slide deck um so you can review it at any point you want um you know have access to it if, if um i i like to think that i put it together i like to think that it's very thorough it answers like 80 to 90 percent of the questions that you might have about dual enrollment uh so i think a lot of the stuff you're going to find it here uh and then of course we'll share um contact information too to um you know um to help you in that way so next slide yes. Um, so first and foremost, I wanted to put together a table of contents, um, right, like just for you to also be able to navigate this a little bit smoother, um, again, because there's a lot of kind of components that come into signing up for a class, so I just wanted you to be able to look at this and be like, okay, cool, like, you know, I could just jump to the actual form, right, slides 16 to 26, um, I, I just want to learn about the application, um, uh, the online, like, open CCC application, then you can check out these sites, uh, but again, just kind of gives you a breakdown, um, so this is kind of like the agenda for today, like what we're going to be talking about. But also again, right, like for you to be able to navigate the uh, the slide deck once you um, once you do start this process. So it's all here, and then uh, yep, yeah, next slide. Um, so um, as you all kind of saw, right, I, I do have a section of like before you get started. I think there's like three, four different things that you definitely want to take care of even before you um, actually like do like the open CCC, right, like the application and like the, the form. Um, and then of course um, these are kind of intuitive, like this kind of makes sense, right? Um, you definitely want to check our academic calendar. Right um, here, you're gonna find um, basically what it is, right? Like very self-explanatory, right? Like a calendar for each quarter and for like the academic year, right? So you're gonna know when you can apply for like the um, for like the summer, right? Like for example, you wanna you wanna take classes in the summer, right? Yeah. So I know that like if you went to our academic calendar, it will tell you like you can now apply for the summer, right? Um, you can view our class schedule. It'll also tell you like what classes we're gonna be offering each quarter, um, and then um, another big one is the uh, enrollment, um, your enrollment window based on priority enrollment. Um, so when we talk about like dual enrollment students, high school students signing up for classes, um, sad to say you don't actually get any priority, like you're actually signing up for classes after everyone has signed up for classes, right? Um, and then uh, that's when you come in and, you know, you're able to um, then, right, like uh, look for classes that might have open seats and whatnot. Uh, but again, right, like if you do go here, you'll be able to see, right, that's like everyone is listed and then you have like at the very bottom, like high school students can not sign up for classes. Uh, but again, right, like you definitely want to check that out because you, it'll give you your date and your kind of enrollment window of like when you can actually go into the system and and try to add or, um, add or drop classes. Uh, and then I guess that's a good segue into like uh, um, like important dates and deadlines. Um, and it'll also tell you when you can add classes uh, and when you can drop classes. And like dropping classes is, is a huge one. Um, some of these deadlines are, not some, I would say most of these deadlines are, um, we're very strict about them, right? Like we definitely want you to understand that and, um, and just be very mindful of that, right? That if you sign up for class, uh, there's deadlines for when you can drop, when you can't drop. Uh, and like, what does that mean, right? Like dropping with the W, dropping without a W, all that good stuff, but uh, you can find uh, definitely more about it there. Um, and then of course, right, like you can also find out when our quarter um, system, when our quarters start, right? Um, so just as a, um, 
kind of throwing it out there for those of you that might not know or that you don't know by now, right? Like we are in a quarter system, right? So it's also kind of important to, to understand, right? Like you're taking a, a fall quarter class, but that doesn't necessarily mean it aligns with your fall semester um, here at uh, Los Altos. So just kind of keeping all those dates in mind and you can find all that information uh, by clicking here or you just go to this website. Um, and again, it'll give you a breakdown of all that. Um, and then on to the next slide. Um, so once you reviewed our calendar, then of course you can check out our class schedule. Uh, and this is right where you're going to find um, uh, information very specific to the classes that you want to take, right? Uh, so you mentioned you want to take like, uh, you said a psych class? Okay, right. So like you would go to our class schedule and then they will tell you which psych classes we're offering in the summer, right? And then like even what those classes look like, right? Like, is it online? Is it in person? Is it a little bit of both, uh, right? Like, does it actually align with our uh, traditional summer quarter, right? So you're going to find all of that, right? Like, who's the teacher? Uh, the times that it meets, all that good stuff. Um, very important here that I want to point out. Uh, this is kind of like uh, like step three before you, before you even sign up. Uh, you definitely definitely want to find out if your classes have prerequisites. Um, are you familiar with prerequisites? You know, okay. So and I'm sure so you kind of no not really. And then I'm sure some people right like on the on the Zoom uh, maybe they also have questions around around pre prerequisites. Um, so what a prerequisite is is basically a class that you need to have completed prior to signing up for the class that you want to take. Um, I'll just give you kind of like a made up scenario. Don't quote me on this, right? Like, let's say you want to do um, Psych 30, right? And then you go to the class schedule and then it says, cool, you can take Psych 30, but before that you have to complete Psych 1, right? Um, so that's a, that's a prerequisite that you have to um, um, have. So of course, if you don't have it, then you can take the class, uh, but there's also kind of ways around, uh, not around, but there's a way you can um, also uh, fulfill those prerequisites, right? Sometimes it's with, with high school classes or sometimes you've taken the class um, at another college um, but again, right, that's something that you want to like, keep in mind because if the class has a prerequisite and if you don't have that prerequisite, then of course you can't, you can't take the class. So very, very important. Uh, and then if you do find out the class has a prerequisite and you do have that prerequisite, then there's an, another form. It's like, I'm going to talk about like how different forms. So uh, this is where, again, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this process, but this is another form that you have to fill out if you do have a prerequisite, right? Just basically telling our admissions office, hey, um, I have the prerequisite. Um, here it is. Here's my transcript. Here's my, um, right, whatever the case may be that you're submitting to, to fulfill your prerequisites. Uh, and then Mr. Ryan, do you want, just want to give me a heads up if there's like kind of questions in the chat or any any comments? Um, I'm going to drop the, the um, presentation Okay. the chat. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. Um, Sorry, thank you. Yeah, and then just for, uh, for those of you that are joining us in Zoom, um, if you want me to slow down or if you want me to kind of come back come back to a previous slide um you have any like questions comments concerns i'll really at any, at any point just drop something on the chat um and then again we can revisit that information um but yeah very important i just want you all to kind of write like make sure that we're on the same page um and then um and then you yeah, go from there so um cool perfect so just kind of basic information that you need um and then i'll give you like kind of like the summarized version of what this process looks like uh, and then I'll get into like the very specifics, right? So again, right, like if you want to sign up for a dual enrollment class as a high school student, you need to fill out an open CCC application. Um, you need to fill out uh, or Adobe sign form, which is a dual enrollment form. Uh, in addition to that, you have to fill out the uh, your what is it out of the out of district um, um, form, which which is somewhat similar, but again, you do have to complete both of them, right? Uh, I know that I come across students that they're like, hey, I filled out your form. How come I can't? How come I'm not clear to take classes? And it's likely that you haven't. Um, they haven't filled out. Um, your district specific form. So again, I did, like I even kind of bothers me to talk about how many forms you have to like fill out and do this and do that. Uh, but this is just kind of the, the process that you probably like that we have to run with. Uh, and the more you know about it, the more like inform you about it, the easier it will just be for you to knock it out. Um, so again, right, like the open CC application, uh, the R foothill dual enrollment form, your um, uh, MBLA um, out of district form that you have to fill out. Um, and then kind of, as I mentioned, right, like in the previous slide, like if you do have prerequisites, you have to fill out, you have to fill out that form too. Um, and then once everything, all of that is submitted, um, then you, um, you will hear from our admissions office, right? Like saying like, okay, we got everything cool. You can sign up for classes, check your date. And then you just go in there and manually um, enroll in the class, right? That's another question that we get sometimes too. They're like, hey, I filled out, I submitted my 10 forms and I, and I submitted my open CCC. How come I'm not enrolled yet? Um, you do have to um, uh, go into our my portal and enroll yourself in in a class. Uh, so again, that's kind of like the like the last step, really, that um, that you would have to cover. 
Uh, but let's start with the open uh, with the open CCC application, uh, online application. Uh, if we go to the next slide, um, and then with these steps, I'm I'm gonna kind of just kind of go through them pretty fast, right? Because again, you're gonna have access to this. Um, but I will kind of make some stops in like some crucial parts that we where you do have to uh, take note of things. So uh, your starting point, right? Uh, pretty simple. Foothill.edu slash apply. You go in there. You're gonna see a big red button in like in the middle of the screen that says apply now. Just click there, um, and then uh, next slide, please. Um, and then, so once you get to this point, we kind of have two groups of students, right? Like we have students that have already taken classes in the past, uh, community college classes in the past, um, and then we have students that this is like your very first uh, community college class, right? Um, if I could, um, Mr. Ryan, if I could just get some uh, interaction on the Zoom, uh, can like if if there's kids that maybe can raise their hands if they've taken uh, a class in the past, a dual enrollment class. Oh, yeah, we got a hand. Oh, nice. Yep. Cool. That, that was a very, very quick response. That, yeah, that was going to be a little, a little delayed. Cool. So, so again, right, like this is, um, uh, we do come across that, right? Like, or you, you come across that, right? Like, you're going to get to this point and you have to, uh, of course, determine like, oh, I've already taken a class in the past. I'm actually kind of familiar with this process. Then you would just go to sign in, right? But if you're like, oh, this is my very first time, then you're going to create an account. Um, first time or have you taken a class before, Miss? I've never taken. You have an open CC account. Okay, interesting. I think <laughs> okay. I did it a while ago. Okay, okay, cool. So uh, so I guess that's another scenario, right? Like maybe you maybe you did go in here and create an account at some point, but you never took a class. Uh, but it's just um, again, right? Like just know if if open CCC application kind of rings a bell, then you just have to determine which student you are, right? Like a new student or a returning student. And the next slide. Um and then um here, so um the uh, open CCC, it's basically like a uh, um but it's a system-wide, California-wide application, right? Uh, which we have very little control over. Uh, this year they revamped, and I say quote unquote revamped their application, but with like any new applications, like you have to like come across like glitches and like things that are like, again, not very intuitive and you kind of have to like troubleshoot around. Uh, one of the biggest ones um, this year is that when, regardless if you're creating an account or you're a uh, returning student, signing in, creating an account, doesn't matter, you have to use your email address. For some reason, the system, is not picking up phone numbers. Um, I get like very annoying, very frustrating. Um, so you do have to log in with your um, uh, with your email address, right? Again, whether it's your first time creating it, you're just using your, a new email address, or you're signing in. You have to make sure to remember um, which email address. So I hope you remember which email address. Okay, good. All right, good, good. So again, email address. Biggest takeaway here: email address, no phone number. All right, don't don't use your phone number at all. Uh, email address. Uh, and the next slide, please. Um, and then, uh, so for new students, again, right, like you, you punch in that email address and then they send you a verification code. Uh, and then next next slide, please. Okay. Sorry, these, these are going to be kind oh, of yeah, a... Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. <laughs> no, you're good. Just keep telling me. Um, and then, oh yeah, so we're good here. So again, right, like this is another... Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, go, go back. Yeah, go back. Um, so this is another point, right, where like if you're a new student and they're like, oh, give us your phone number, uh, you can actually skip that. Um, Again, for some reason, this, this application is having problems with phone numbers. So you can actually leave that blank and then uh, proceed to the next uh, um, steps of creating your profile. You'll see that there's three simple steps, right? One of them is like your contact info, uh, and then the other one's like personal info, and then the final one is to create your password. Um, this is just a general pro tip. I think that this is like something that you should do every single time you create an account, right? So create your account, create your password, and then make sure you save that password somewhere, because um, we do come across um, very often, right? Like students are like, oh, I'm returning. I created an account, but I don't remember my password. So um, I hope you remember your password. You got it? Okay, cool. Uh, and I know that most of you, right? Like if you have your own device, then it, like it just saves it there. Uh, but again, it's just best practice to just like write it down somewhere, put it on your notes app, whatever the case may be. Uh, because if you don't remember your password and you try to come back, then it's, it, it, take, it takes a little bit of uh, time to try to troubleshoot and get your, um, um, what is it, retrieve your password. So uh, um, next slide. Um, pretty simple here. So once you've created your account, uh, and this, um, you'll notice here, this is like both for new, new students and returning students. Uh, once you've logged in or once you've created your account, then you're just going to click on start new application. Uh, and the next, next slide. Um, cool. Um, and then just a kind of a general announcement here. Uh, so both of our, our summer and fall applications are already open. So, uh, if you, um, I know you missed, you want to take summer classes, right? So you can go in there and, and apply for our summer term. For those of you that might be considering taking uh, classes in the fall, um, and again, our fall quarter does start in September, uh, end of September, uh, then you can also do that. You can actually uh, already submit your application for that. Uh, a really big one, really big question that you make sure that you want to get correct 
Um, a lot of the questions on the OpenCCC, they're questions that apply to you and it's just like your information, right? Like, uh, so you'll, you'll answer them like based on your circumstances or whatever the case may be. Uh, but there is one that we do want to note that you make sure you answer correctly uh, because this does throw off our system and your application if you end up um, uh, selecting the wrong answer. So when it, when it does ask you under the education tab, when it asks you for your enrollment status, um, again, like it makes sense, but for some reason, some students just kind of like skim through it and they select the wrong one. But you definitely want to make sure that you're selecting uh, enrolling in high school or lower grade in college at the same time. Again, very, very important or else we're going to have um, like admissions issues where we have to kind of go back and forth with, with the admissions office uh, and we have to change the status of your application. Um, but this does make sense, right? Like you're a high school student, so you're enrolling in, in high school and college at the same time. Uh, next, next slide. Uh, very quickly here, um, I'm sure you'll get the hang of it. This is the only part that's kind of intuitive of, of the application, right? Like um, um, you want to make sure you complete all sections. You get a little check mark after you complete each section. That kind of makes sense, right? Uh, and then you get to the final final page, and then you just once you're ready to submit, then you want to submit your application. Um, and then uh, next slide. Sorry. <laughs> and then. So again, once you've done all that, congrats, you've submitted your application. Um, I like to tell students, just take a picture of this for your own personal records, uh, just in case, um, again, like in the future, you have to troubleshoot for whatever reason, uh, at least you have this confirmation page. Um, so just take that and then save, save for your records. And then uh, uh, next next slide. Um, so that was that was step one, right? Like we're done, knocked out the open CCC, we're good, application out of the way. Uh, and then, so what, what happens next after you submit your application, uh, within 48 hours, you do get a welcome email from us, right? Like welcome as a high school student. Um, the biggest thing that you want to take away from that email is that it has your student ID, your Foothill student ID, also known as CWID, also known as college-wide ID. I promise we try not to confuse you, but we just kind of use those terms uh, interchangeably. Um, so this is an email you definitely want to look for. Uh, we say within 48 hours, but some, some students like will get it within an hour, within two hours. You know, again, like it could take the whole... 24 hours, it could take the whole 48 hours, uh, but just make sure to keep an eye out for it. Um, and then do check your spam and junk folder, um, right? Like we also sometimes get emails from students, hey, I never got my welcome email, what's going on? And then it, it turns out that it's in their spam and, and junk folder. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. Uh, and then one thing I note down here is that once you get this email, then basically that's like your, that's your cue, that's your like time to, uh, to that you can uh, move forward and complete the dual enrollment form. Um, because again, right, like it has your student ID, and then you'll see in the next few steps that um, you have to log into our Foothill My Portal to find the form and, and, um, and take care of all that. So, uh, cool. And then next slide. Um, uh, and then this is just telling you, right, like what I said earlier, like you're halfway there. And now we can move on to the dual enrollment form. Um, and then here, so um, the form is actually housed under your, your Foothill My Portal. Um, I think this is um, like, again, like not, like not necessarily the, the most fun experience, but I think this is an experience that you should have because regardless of where you go to college, right? Like this is, you're gonna get exposure to what a college portal is, right? And you'll, you'll find out, right? That it's like basically houses all your apps, um, anything like with your student records, financial records, all that good stuff. Um, so again, right, like we do house that, this dual enrollment form there. Um, so you do have to log into your um, college portal. Um, and again, I kind of give you a breakdown, right? Like of, of the information that goes in there, your campus wide ID, also known as your student ID, which you would have gotten in that welcome email. You just punch it in here. Um, if this is your first time logging in, then you do use um, your eight-digit birthday as a temporary password. And then uh, I kind of give you like the format here, right? So for you for you to um, uh, punch it in there. And then uh, it does prompt you to then create a, a new password. Uh, but for those of you that like you, you, you're already familiar with the portal, you've already, uh, for whatever reason, you've taken classes at Dianza or Foothill, uh, then you should already have access to this, um, uh, to this portal. Um, so for those of you, of course, you don't have to um, create your like 10 password. You just create the password that you've already had. Uh, and next slide. Um, these steps, I'll just kind of skim through it because again, you'll have this here, like nothing to explain here. Really, you just have to follow them. So you go to apps uh, and the next slide. Um, and then you find the Adobe Sign uh, student form tile. You click on that uh, and the next slide. Uh, and then there's like a, uh, like a list of like forms here. Again, like this is not very like, User friendly, like this kind of runs me a lot, like 1999. Like, it's not again, like not very easy to follow. Uh, for those, if what, what year were you? What year were you born? Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. All right. Sorry. Just, you, you didn't have to do this. Gauging, yeah. Just uh, this is a flashback. <laughs> a little bit of a flashback for sure. I feel like a lot of the processes that, that I work with, it's like like 
why are we still living in 1999? But anyway, um, so yeah, right, like you kind of go through this list of forms and then you're gonna find the one that says uh, Foothill High School dual enrollment form. You click on that. Um, and then uh, next, yeah, next slide. Um, so very important here, um, it'll just kind of like the screen will be kind of gray and then it'll tell you to click continue at the bottom. Very, very important. You wanna make sure that you attach your unofficial um, high school transcript. Uh, this is like by far the, the point where we get a lot of um, um, like students, right? Like this is where students come across the issue, right? They're like, hey, like I submitted my form, what's going on? And it turns out your form was actually denied or it was not accepted because we don't have your unofficial transcript. Uh, and again, we just use that to be able to identify you, be able to connect you to, to like the high school that you're, that you're uh, taking classes from. Um, so again, very, very important. We get a lot of forms that get denied because they because students forget to submit their unofficial transcript. Okay, and it's an unofficial transcript, right? Like it's not like you don't have to go to the registrar and get like a official document. Like you literally, wherever you have access to your um, unofficial transcript, just get a copy of that, screenshot it, whatever you need to do to then be able to attach it to the bottom of the form. Um, and again, just a reminder, right? Like you're not, uh, it's not gonna be approved. Your form will not be approved uh, if, if, uh, if it's not there. So I definitely wanted to stop there to kind of give you all that reminder. Uh, and then finally, after like 50 steps, you finally get to your form, right? Like this is the actual form that you have to fill out. Uh, and then I do kind of give you all some tips here to uh, what to do and what not to do uh, with the form when you're filling it out, right? Um, so just kind of to go over some of them, right? Um, keep in mind that you have to fill out a new form every single quarter that, that you want to take classes with us, right? So like, for example, you may like, if you take summer classes and you're like, oh, I really like my psych class, I want to take another class in the fall, right? Then you just have to uh, complete this process again. Uh, but I promise you by the second time, it is, it is a lot smoother. Uh, it's just this is kind of first time where um, it is a little, again, just not very intuitive and it, it feels kind of long. Um, but again, like, so you do have to fill out a new form uh, every quarter. Um, we highly, highly recommend you to list up to five classes because then that pre prevents you from like having to fill out a new form. Um, what's gonna happen a lot, you're gonna experience this a lot and this is just kind of for everyone. You're gonna be like, uh, I'm gonna put you on the spot just cause you're my, my only audience here. So you're gonna like, you're gonna be like, okay, like I really wanna do Psych 30, you know, uh, over the summer, like I'm ready, like I wanna do it. And then what happens, you complete the process and then um, um, like, let's say we're only offering like two Psych sections. And then by the time you go sign up for classes, the, the classes are filled up, right? So um, I'm not trying to discourage you, I promise, like, a, a knock on wood, that doesn't happen to you, but I'm just, I'm just trying to present scenarios, right, like that, like, that does happen to students, right, like, like, I'm really set on this class, I want to do it, I want to take it, and then they complete everything, and then they go to uh, register for classes, and the class is, like, booked, it's completely filled up. So that is the reason why we uh, definitely highly, highly encourage you to do a little bit of research, and maybe find, like, five classes uh, that you're, like, okay, like, you know, like, I'm down to do this class, like, if I, this is going to be my plan B, plan C, plan D, right, et cetera. Um, because this will prevent you from just completing this process all over again, you know, when you do, if you do find out that your class is filled up. So um, just something to keep in mind. Uh, and then just make sure to uh, give us the course name and, and title. Um, uh, usually it's not very helpful if you provide the CRN because that just requires a little more digging on, on our admissions team. Um, so this is just kind of um, and, uh, uh, help us help you, right? Like just kind of help us uh, streamline this for you. Um, and then we can process your form a lot faster. So um, again, course name and title, um, like there's no need for you to enter the CRN or, or enter this information um, in, instead of just the CRN because we do get a lot of forms that it's just the CRN. Um, things to not do. So um, don't list classes that you want to take in the future, right? Kind of it goes like with the first point that I made, right? Um, uh, we will not, um, we'll process your form for that term, but then like all the other classes, like you're just going to have to complete a new one um, next quarter. Um, don't, this one is very popular. That happens a lot. Uh, students list different sections of the same class, uh, and there's no need for that, right? Because uh, um, uh, once you get clear for a class, you can enroll any of the sections, right? So I'm going to go back to your Psych, psych 30 example. <laughs> That's okay, right? Um, psych 30, right? Uh, you're going to find out that maybe we're offering like four different sections, right? So there's no need for you to list all the four different sections here. You just need to tell us that you want to take Psych 30, and then you can essentially sign up for any of them. Um, so I just, I do want to point that out because we do get a, um, a lot of forms, right? Where it's like, you know, same class, five different sections. And it's like, there, there was no need to do all of that. And then, so next slide. Now, any, any questions coming up in the, everything good? Okay, cool. Um, and then, um, so again, like here, like, so it's gonna, once you enter the course information, all that, then you have to enter like your uh, parents info, your um, um, high school administrator. Uh, Mr. Ren, correct me if I'm here, but is it Mr. Uh, who signs off on these forms? Or is it? Uh, uh, I think it's Satterway and Satterway, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, that's correct. I think I've seen her signature on, on these forms. Okay. 
Um, so again, this is something that you can check with uh, Ms., um, with your college and career tech, uh, but I believe it's Ms. Ms. Satterwhite that you would just enter her information here. Um, and then um, a really big kind of reminder or heads up here, just make sure to double check the email addresses. Um, again, right, like, because it kind of makes sense, like, if you do, like, if you have a grammatical error in the email address, then this form is never going to get to that uh, uh, participant or recipient that, that you had in mind, right? So just double check your parents' email address, double check your Ms. Satterwhite's uh, email address. Uh, and then once you're good, once you're like, okay, this is 100% good, then you just want to click next. Um, and then uh, just one more step, you just want to punch in your name here, and then you want to click submit. Uh, and then this is just a process to verify your email address. Uh, so then you're going to get this like uh, email from Adobe Sign, and then you just want to click on the um, like hyperlinked uh, text that, that says uh, confirm my email address. You click it, and then boom, it, you're going to get the sign that says, all right, everything's good, you're confirmed. Um, and then next slide. Um, so I, I did want to kind of create like some sort of diagram or like a map of like uh, everything that I just talked about. Cause I, again, like I, I would not be surprised if some of you are scratching your head and, <laughs> and trying to like figure it all out. Um, so again, right, like this is just kind of, it lets you know, right, like the, the workflow or like how things work, right? So um, with the form, right, like you fill it out, you attach your unofficial transcript, right? You confirm your email, all that good stuff. And then uh, you give your parent a nudge, you give them a heads up, uh, let them know, hey, I just completed my form, check your email because uh, they're asking you to sign, sign off on it. Um, and then that's kind of where we end up here, right? Like your parent signs off on the form, they review it and signs. Um, and then it goes to Ms. Satterwhite to sign. And then once she signs, then it comes to our admissions office um, to review and process. Uh, and then if they see that everything's good, your transcript is there, uh, everything looks smooth. Uh, then they'll uh, process it for you. And then what happens here is that um, um, all parties involved will get a PDF copy. And that's really for all the steps. So like, like for example, like even when you fill it out and then your parent signs, uh, you'll get a confirmation email just saying like, hey, like, you know, your, uh, your mom, dad signed uh, and et cetera, right? like for all the steps. Um, just a reminder or heads up that like, this is this all happens automatically, right? Like this is all like Adobe sign taking care of all these steps. So um, um, like, it's not like, um, what's it called? Um, like it'll just happen kind of like in this order, right? Like you don't have to do anything here. Like the form will just uh, automatically go to your parent's email. Uh, your parent doesn't have to do anything after they sign. It'll just automatically go to the high school admin uh, and so on. Um, and then I did provide here steps to enroll, um, right? Like, so once every, once the form has been processed and you kind of get that email, um, the, like the, your PDF copy, then you can go in here and uh, sign up for classes on, on your own. Uh, and this is through the, my portal. This is the same uh, portal, college portal where you, signed up for classes, or, or I'm not sorry, not signed up for classes, but where you found the form to fill it out in the first place. Uh, so again, you have this diagram to kind of help you uh, navigate this process. Um, and then I, I think we're pretty much, and then that's it. So then uh, the, the next slide, um, I have to do my due diligence and invite you all to our, our open house. So it is happening this Saturday, um, 9.30 to uh, 1.30 PM. Uh, please come out, check it out. Uh, we have uh, staff, students, faculty there. Um, it's a pretty lively event. Uh, um, we, we really do go all out for, uh, for our open houses, uh, especially since we, <laughs> we, we've been doing these awkward, really weird virtual open houses for the past two years. So uh, we're really excited to finally do it in person. Um, again, like if you're interested, um, you know, to come to Foothill after you graduate, or even if you just want to get more familiar as a dual enrollment student, right? Like what, what, uh, what different departments are on campus and kind of, uh, you know, like the classes that you can take uh, to, through those departments. Uh, so highly, highly encourage you to come out. Um, we're going to be there bright and early, 930. Um, and then, yeah. And then uh, at, at the very end, um, so this is contact information, right? Um, our admissions uh, office is, they're pretty good at like getting back to you. So if you have questions, um, like reach out to them. But if whatever, for whatever reason, if that's not the case, like they're not getting back to you, um, I am going to share Ms., uh, my, um, my email address with uh, Ms. Ren, and then she can, you know, she can make it accessible for y'all to, to reach out to me. Uh, for you all to reach out to me. Uh, contact info, um, you know, like I know that I'm, I don't want to sound too pessimistic about this process that it's like long and annoying and boring, right? But like it kind of is, it kind of is. But um, but again, like I also want to let you all know that you have uh, support, right? Like we're here to help you. I'm here to help you. Um, like I'm, I, I told Ms. Ryan, I was really excited to come out here and talk to you all about this because um, again, like I hate to think that that's the reason why we have a job because our processes are so like, like weird and like, you know, like long and confusing. But I mean, we really are here for that, right? Like we wanna make sure that, that you're taken care of and, and that we're uh, walking you through, um, through every step and, and you're not doing this on your own, right? Like you have plenty of adults, uh, you just gotta knock on our door and, and we'll be there to, to help you out for sure. Um, but yeah, 